Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. Chris here with another video. We've got this big boy, this big, tall tower. This is like, but in like mid to late or later 2000s period, this was like the really popular style of case, right? Where you have this giant full size tower, uh, lots of room to add stuff. Um, I'm gonna switch it. It's so shiny too. I had to turn down the, uh, the brightness here to be able to show it properly. Um, here's from the side. This was the other thing that was really popular at the time, right? Plexiglass side panels. Let me lighten this thing up a little bit here. Yeah, so you got these plexiglass side panels where you could show off the insides. Um, I've got another case that's similar to this that I, I have to take apart, um, but it had like the, the cold cathode tubes and stuff in it. And sometimes you saw like they had the, like the glow in the dark stuff that the cathode would reflect off of, like crazy stuff. Anyways, this isn't quite so crazy because it's obviously been a rebuild here. This is an AMD based um, machine that I built up here and want to show off here before it gets put into donation. So um, I'm going to, I'm going to take the lid off here and there's a fan that's built into this. So I got to kind of be careful when I'm disassembling and moving around, but I'll move the camera on top and we can take a quick look at the hardware that's inside before we boot it up and check out windows. Here's our top down view. Okay, so um, can't quite see here, but we've got an FSP group power supply. This is a 350 watt power supply. So not super powerful, but more than enough to handle what's going on here. Um, up here, we've got a pair of optical drives. These are IDE, but I use this cool era appropriate twisted up uh, IDE cable in here. Um, there's a DVD ROM and a DVD burner. Uh, we have a floppy disk drive. And then we've got our hard disk drive here. It's a 2.5 inch, but it is 5,400 RPM. I know it's not super fast, but it's faster than the, um, you know, the really, really slow hard drives that uh, sometimes you can get in some of these older machines as well. So that's all powered up. And then you can see we've got this cable that's hooked up to that fan. The board that's on this system is an Asus board. And I think, did it come out of a... I want to say it came out of a, another, like a, like a brand machine, but I think it's, if I have the correct part number here is an M3A78-EM. Uh, but I think this might be like an OEM board. Uh, and we've got four gig of RAM in here. And then we've got a graphics adapter, which I believe is an AMD or an ATI Radeon. I want to say this is like a 5350 or a 5450. We'll see it when we get booted up, but like a cheap, like 512 or one gig video card. But this is a great setup when you've got like a standalone video card because you're not using any of the system memory for onboard graphics. And that's always going to be a good thing. So let me get this all put back together. I'm going to plug it into the bench monitor and uh, get it booted up so we can check out Windows. So I wanted to hook this up and kind of do the boot up all together, showing the system at the, the bench monitor here. Like I would have normally do it with a, when I've got the monitor or whatever, that's going to get donated with it. Uh, <laughs> because everything's reversed here, I got to kind of stand in the way. So I'm going to quickly power it on and close the door, move the screen and, and hopefully the BIOS screen should not have come on by the time I get out of the way here. There we go. Look at that. I was so fast. Just here. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Yep. So M3A78-EM motherboard. I was I was reading the right sticker. So now we'll get our Windows 10 boot up here. Obviously, because we're on a spinning disk, it'll take a couple of extra seconds. An SSD would obviously be much faster. Uh, but uh, SSDs are not something I have a stockpile of for uh, for these donation machines where I do have lots of SATA disks and the number of disks that have errors and need to be uh, crushed versus the ones that are still in good enough condition for continued use um, is a pretty good ratio uh, in, in my experience. In fact, I've actually found the 2.5 inch drives seem to be more durable. It's weird, you'd think that laptop hard drives wouldn't last because they're in a laptop and get moved around. I find that the desktop hard drives in my experience, and you know, I'm an isolated use case possibly, um, but I find the desktop drives get worn out or have more errors on them than the uh, laptop drives do. So 
for for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the laptops don't get used as much. Who knows? So there we go. Windows is is up. Uh, it's not finished loading yet. Uh, you can kind of barely see on the taskbar there uh, that things are still kind of booting and, and getting themselves into place, but things are loading up on the system. So I'm going to do a quick realignment here and get the camera focused in just on the screen and we can take a look at our specs in hardware info. Our processor installed in this Asus M3A78-EM board is an AMD Phenom 9350E. This is a quad-core processor running at about 1.8 to 2 gigahertz. No, pretty decent. It's not up to speed with every single latest instruction, and this is one of the challenges with older processors like you get with Core 2 Quads and Phenoms and Phenom 2s, etc., is missing things like AVX actually does have a bit of a challenge because those instructions do help with making applications run better, making things like streaming video services run better, and without those instructions in place, software has to do it, which puts more churn on the processor itself. And yeah, you get the picture, I think. Uh, Storage-wise, we've got a 500 gig SATA hard drive, and then we've got a pair of optical drives. Um, one little lesson I'll teach you uh, right now is uh, if you have multiple optical drives or any optical drives installed in Windows 10 and they're not reading properly, go into Device Manager and remove the controller for them. And this happens a lot, especially with IDE stuff. Just remove the IDE controller from Device Manager, restart your system, and it should find them the second time. That's what I had to do with this actually twice or three times, I think, to get both of them to recognize. <laughs> All right, uh, GPU-wise, as I mentioned, this is an AD, AT, um, ATI or AMD, take your pick, uh, Sapphire Radeon HD 6450. So it's 512 megabyte. Uh, PCIe graphics card, nothing great, nothing special, but it's doing desktop graphics without using your system memory, which is good. Uh, the system memory that's installed here is four gig of DDR2 SD RAM, that's four one gig DIMMs, and those are OCZ memory, um, which, you know, I'm sure at the time were really, really awesome memory DIMMs. Now, they're kind of just memory dims. <laughs> that's that's the way of things uh, as, as things go. All right, so that's specs. Let's take a look now and see how we handle some of that web video streaming performance without those AVX controls and other chipset uh, additions in terms of features that are not available on older processors like this. Targeting 720p resolution on this and we'll take a look at how we're handling frame drops. Sometimes expect a little bit of that at the beginning, but I can definitely see we are struggling a little bit here. So we're dropping, what are we at here? Uh, 100 frame drops at 500. So what is that, 20% frame drops? Which is not good at all, but it's okay. So dropping down to 480p would obviously be ideal here. And again, this is, you know, really comes down to the fact that even though it's a quad-core processor, even though it's got a standalone GPU, even though a half gig worth of memory is more than enough to handle desktop graphics and streaming video, without those instruction sets, the processor's got to work overtime. And sometimes it's just, you know, it's going to it's gonna wash out either in hitching or, um, you know, the frame skips, the ones that are really visible. Um, in this case, the actual view, and I know it's really hard to tell with me recording a screen and then YouTube compression, um, but just me watching here, it's watchable. Uh, there's a little tiny bit of hitching, but nothing terrible. And um, it's really just losing some of those frame drops. That's the that's the case. So overall, a, you know, a decent setup for, for someone who's gonna need a computer for basic requirements. So that'll end my review of this build machine with this AMD Phenom processor in this glorious late 2000s style gamer case. As always, I hope you are staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.